watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law, voted best of Las Vegas. Give them a call, 702-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Welcome, and thank you for joining us tonight on News 25 and Ace Country Radio. I'm Roy Rosell. And I'm David Preston on this Memorial Day weekend, Friday, May 26th. Road damage from the water pipe break yesterday has forced the closure of the northbound right travel lane from Carlson Street to Postal Drive on Highway 160 until at least Tuesday. The northbound left travel lane and southbound lanes remain open. Please use caution when traveling in this area. A structure trailer fire erupted in the early morning hours. News 25 was on the scene. In the early morning hours, a structure trailer fire erupted off of State Route 178 on the California side, approximately one mile from the state line on the north side of the roadway. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, along with Nye County Sheriff's Office and News 25, responded to the scene. Fire Chief Scott Lewis has confirmed that there are no injuries resulting from this fire. California authorities are currently investigating to determine the cause of this fire. Officers arrest a local man after receiving an anonymous tip. RJ has the story. On May 16th, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched due to an anonymous tip that Nico DeLuis was allegedly selling heroin and fentanyl from their house. Upon a once and status check ran through Nye County Sheriff's Office dispatch, Nico allegedly returned with a warrant for failure to appear out of the Pahrump Justice Court. Upon arrival to Nico's residence, he was then informed of the warrant and then detained without further issue. Upon a search regarding the arrest, officers allegedly discovered a small container which held approximately 12 circular shaped blue tablet pills. The pills were identified to be oxycodone hydrochloride. The items were seized and Nico was charged with possession of a Schedule II controlled substance less than 14 grams. A local Pahrump man is arrested after a physical altercation with another man. Nye County Sheriff's Office responded to a report of a domestic dispute Upon their arrival, the reporting party stated he got into a physical altercation with another man, later identified as Adam Vogel. The altercation occurred just before the officer's arrival. The reporting party stated to officers that he confronted Adam about money that was stolen. According to the report, Adam allegedly shoved the reporting party with his hands in the chest area. The reporting party stated he created distance from Adam, and then Adam continued to approach him. Adam then physically swung his arms with a closed fist toward the reporting party and hit him on the left side of his head. According to the declaration of arrest, deputies spoke to a witness who confirmed the reporting party's statement. Officers spoke with Adam, who admitted he pushed the reporting party. Adam continued to state that he does not remember everything. Based on the officer's investigation, they found Adam to be the primary aggressor in the unlawful physical altercation. Adam was then placed under arrest and transported to the Nye County Detention Center. Adam Vogel is being charged with domestic battery in the first degree. News 25 will be back after this break. You're watching News 25, local coverage you can count on. Well, the Biden-Harris administration recently gave Nevada over $4.5 million to help with the brownfield revitalization. RJ has a story. Yesterday, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency announced over $4.5 million will be given to the state of Nevada from President Biden's Investing in America agenda in an effort to expedite the assessment and cleanup of brownfield sites in Nevada while advancing environmental justice. Through the multi-purpose assessment revolving loan fund and cleanup grant programs, the EPA has selected four entities in Nevada to receive grants that total more than $4.5 million. These entities are the City of Las Vegas, which will receive a cleanup grant for two 
$2 million, Mineral County, which will receive a cleanup grant of $1,517,000, the City of North Las Vegas, which will receive an assessment grant for $498,750, finally, Northern Nevada Development Authority will receive an assessment grant for $500,000. These investments are part of President Biden's Investing in America agenda to grow the American economy from the bottom up and middle out. From rebuilding our nation's infrastructure to driving over $470 billion in private sector manufacturing and clean energy investments in the United States to creating a manufacturing and innovation boom powered by good paying jobs that don't require a four year degree to building a clean energy economy that will combat climate change and make our communities more resilient. Many communities that are under economic stress, particularly those located in areas that have experienced long periods of disinvestment, lack the resources needed to initiate brownfield cleanup and redevelopment projects. As brownfield sites are transformed into community assets, they attract jobs, promote economic revitalization, and transform communities into sustainable and environmentally just places. Thanks to the historic $1.5 billion boost from President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law, the EPA's Brownfield program is helping more communities than ever begin to address the economic, social, and environmental challenges caused by brownfields and stimulate economic opportunity and environmental environmental revitalization in historically overburdened communities. Recently, the U.S. officially announced its first national strategy to counter anti-Semitism. Yesterday, U.S. Senators Jackie Rosen and James Lankford and Representatives Kathy Manning and Chris Smith, co-chairs of the Senate and House Bipartisan Task Forces for Combating Anti-Semitism, respectively, applauded news of the release of the first-ever national strategy to counter anti-Semitism. This comes after Senator Rosen led 125 members of Congress in a bipartisan and bicameral push for a unified national strategy to combat anti-Semitism. Senator Rosen states, Jewish communities across our country are experiencing an alarming increase of anti-Semitic attacks and incidents. We need a coordinated whole-of-government approach to address anti-Jewish bigotry, and that's why I pushed the administration to put together a national strategy to counter anti-Semitism in all its forms. Senator Rosen goes on to state, with the unified strategy, which includes specific actions for the federal government to undertake, we are going to effectively utilize the full force of the United States government to root out anti-Semitic hate across our nation. As a co-founder of the Senate Bipartisan Task Force for Combating Anti-Semitism with Senator James Lankford in 2019, Senator Rosen has been at the forefront of the fight against anti-Semitism. Senators Rosen and Lankford recently introduced the Holocaust Education and Anti-Semitism Lessons Act to tackle the rise of anti-Semitism by strengthening Holocaust education in the United States. Last Congress, Senator Rosen's bipartisan Never Again Education Act was signed into law, establishing a federal fund through the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum to provide teachers with resources and training necessary to teach students the important lesson of the Holocaust. Well, in today's business brief, Medicare broker Mario wants to talk to you about how the basics of Medicare work. I'm a Medicare broker here at AMA. Uh, come, come on over and visit us. Um, we, if you're just turning 65, I, we can help you enroll into Medicare. We can help you with any questions having to do with Medicare, and we can give you the basics of how Medicare works. Please come on over, and we'll be able to assist you with that. If you're, if you're a veteran, please uh, come, on, come on over, visit us here at, uh, at the Medicare by AMA. Uh, if, you, if you're not aware, there are some special plans out there I, it, they're ideal for veterans, especially if you get your if you're getting your prescriptions at the VA. Uh, you have some special plans out there that actually do uh, give back to your Part B. On the Part B, you know how expensive it is. So if you're a veteran and you're paying 164, 90, or maybe even more, uh, if you are paying that, there are some plans out there that do pay for your Part B, and we have plans that will pay 100, 125 dollars for your Part B. So that will really help out with with your uh, with your bills and 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 assist you with anything uh, as far as being able to pay your bills or, or or even keeping your Medicare costs down. 
So come on over and we'll be able to talk and I'll show you that we'll show you the plans that we have out there for you. And JD? We're looking forward to helping you. That's what we're here for. Badwater reopens after the closure on May 20th due to flash flooding. Badwater Road reopened on May 25th after National Park Service employees moved the dirt and rocks off the road and filled the unsafe drop-offs on the road edges. Park rangers closed the road off on May 20th due to safety concerns after a flash flooding. Several park visitors attempted to drive through the active flooding. Park rangers ended up having to pull their vehicles out of the mud. Fortunately, no cars were swept off the roadway, and park rangers want to remind people to turn around and don't drown during flash floods. We'll have more news for you on the other side of this break. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. The rideshare company Lyft is offering discounts to keep drivers and passengers safe this holiday weekend. This holiday weekend, Lyft is looking to keep riders and drivers safe. In partnership with Zero Fatalities, a discounted Lyft pass will once again be offered during Memorial Day weekend. The pass will offer rides $5 off a Lyft ride using the code Memorial Day 2023. The code will only be valid starting Friday, May 26th at 6 p.m. through Tuesday, May 30th at 6 a.m. The offer includes rides in Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, Summerlin, and Henderson for Southern Nevada, as well as Sparks and Reno in Northern Nevada. To redeem the offer, Lyft users must log on to the app and enter the code under Add Lyft Pass. Here's Mikey with your sports report. Time now for your News 25 look at sports. Stanley Cup playoffs quest for the West. Game four last night in Dallas went to overtime. Golden Knights fell 3-2, Game 5 tomorrow night at 5 p.m. from T-Mobile Arena. Las Vegas Aviators in Tacoma all week long, taking on the Rainers last night. The Aviators pulverized the Rainers 14-6. They're back at it again this evening at 7.05. The Las Vegas Aces are off to a perfect start to their season, beating the Seattle Storm last Saturday 105-64 and they beat the Los Angeles Sparks last night, 94 to 85. Aces have their home opener tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at Michelob Ultra Arena. They play the Los Angeles Sparks again, and they'll be receiving their championship rings as well. The Oakland A's have released their first renderings of their new proposed ballpark in Las Vegas, sitting on nine acres at the Tropicana site. The park will feature a variety of seating options, partially retractable roof, and a 30,000 seating capacity. And congratulations to the Pahrump Junior Trojans baseball team. They won the May Madness Tournament in Las Vegas last week. And that's your look at sports on News 25. And the community is invited to attend a free family event for this Memorial Day weekend. With the holiday weekend approaching, everyone is invited to attend Memorial Day at the park hosted by Clark County Commissioner William McCurdy II. This free event is Saturday, May 27th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Deer Springs Park. The whole family can enjoy free food, music, bounce houses, face painting, and more. No RSVP is required. The event is in partnership with the City of North Las Vegas as Deer Springs Park is located at 6550 Aviary Way in North Las Vegas. What better way to kick off the weekend of summer break than by bringing the whole family out for some free fun, said Commissioner McCurdy. I encourage everyone to take advantage of the nice weather and spend this holiday weekend visiting all the vendors at this spectacular event. Mikey is here to tell us what's coming up on Classic Country Breakfast this Sunday. Howdy! On the menu this week for Classic Country Breakfast, we celebrate the life and music of Tom T. Hall. Born on May 25th, 1936, we'll hear a few of his number one songs. He had 11 of them. And Don Williams, born on May 27th, 1939, 
Also, Hank Williams Jr. had a birthday on May 26th. We'll hear the number one song on this day in 1969, and we'll pay tribute to Tina Turner, who once covered a Chris Christopherson song. This week on Classic Country Breakfast on Ace Country Radio. And don't forget to swing by Backyard Butchers tomorrow, Saturday, May 27th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Ace Country Radio will be on location. We'll see you there. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Well, it's looking like sunny skies for this Memorial Day weekend and partly cloudy skies on our following Monday. John is with us to talk about our upcoming forecast. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios and worldwide on that local BTV app. The app that puts a little shimmy in your step, don't you know? Out in uh, Fernley, 74 degrees, 75 in Fallon, Carson City, cool at 71, but not as cool as the folks in Tonopah. You're the coolest at 68. 72 out there in Goldfield, beautiful day in Beatty at 84. 89 degrees, not too bad for a hot spot out there in uh, Amargosa and Las Vegas, close behind at 87. Perfect weather. Uh, Death Valley, 99, missed triple digits. This is the best weekend ever here in the Paradise of Rump, however. Well, let's take a look, 84 degrees, not too bad. 86 a little bit earlier. I, actually, a beautiful day with just... Winds whispering to us gently at 11 miles per hour out of the south-southwest. Sun rose this morning in all its glory, hope, and promise at 5.30. It's setting this evening. Look for it to go away at 7.51. Taking that dive into the ocean and waiting to uh, uh, surprise us again tomorrow morning. Uh, low tonight, 60 degrees. We're going to see uh, clear skies tonight. Beautiful star watching if you're into that kind of thing. I was kind of thinking about looking for some UFOs over the weekend. Why not? We're out in the right area near 51. Uh, here for the rest of the week, let's take a look at the, well, the weekend. Sunshine. Woo! Sunshine. Two out of three Memorial Day weekend days. Uh, clouds appear on Monday and uh, stay with us for the rest of the week. But uh, sunshine, nothing but sunshine on uh, Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures hugging the low 90s and upper and mid 80s throughout the week. Winds relatively calm at under 15 miles per hour for most of the week. It's going to be a good Memorial Day weekend. Great, day, uh, great days to go out and barbecue and enjoy the uh, America that we love. All right, back to the desk. Here's Dave and Rory. Thanks, John. Well, in remembrance of Memorial Day, News 25 will be taking Monday off, but we will resume with more news on Tuesday. I'm Roy Rossell. And I'm David Preston. Have a happy and safe Memorial Day weekend. Good, Good night. night.